Okay, my name is Darren, come from Sydney, Australia, and we came to Ukraine on the 17th of February, arriving in Kiev. First impressions of uh, Kiev, uh, interesting. Uh, to be honest, uh, the people very busy, uh, busy life, uh, not many people like to smile at you. Um, so it was, a, it was a very interesting experience. My partner and I love the snow, very uh, special for us to see the snow uh, because we don't have this at home. Um, the food and the culture and the history of Kiev is very beautiful, the churches. The uh, cost of living in Australia is very expensive. Uh, I guess it's comparable to what you have here in Ukraine, uh, but for example, minimum wage is about $20 per hour. Uh, $20 per hour. Um, 20 Australian dollars, so American dollars, you would say maybe about a $15 per hour. In months, um, so for example, at my job, I get approximately 4,000 Australian dollars per month, uh, which is pretty much minimum wage for Australia. It's, uh, it's enough to get by, uh, utilities are very expensive. Uh, for example, uh, electricity for our house. We pay approximately $600 for the quarter for electricity. Uh, the gas comes at about $300 per quarter and the water is about $250 per quarter. So it is it's quite expensive. Uh, rent uh, in Australia and Sydney especially is quite expensive. Depending what city you live in, uh, it could be a bit more expensive or a bit more cheaper but Sydney is definitely one of the most expensive uh, places to live where your cheapest rent in a, a faraway suburb could be maybe $300 a week, far from the city. Or if you have a flat in the city, you could be paying $800 to $1,000 a week for a flat. Uh, the percentage, about 4%. We have quite a few casinos. Uh, I would not say in Australia that gambling is a, a very uh, big thing. Um, a lot of uh, the Asians tend to gamble. They come in from, from China with lots of money and come to our town, come to Sydney and gamble in our casinos. Uh, but for, for Australians in general, gambling is not a very big problem. A uh, bigger problem would be more homelessness, people living on the streets and things like that. Kangaroo meat. <laughs> Kangaroo meat is unique. It's not something we eat all the time. It's more if tourists come to visit our house, we will buy some kangaroo meat and we'll cook it. It's chewy. It's a, it's a red meat, it's chewy. Um, similar to a steak, but stronger flavor. So we use both. Mostly we use card. Most people pay with card. For example, for my life, we pay everything with a card and every month we then put cash on the card. <laughs> In Northern Australia, it's a possibility. Once you go up north towards Queensland, top of Queensland or Northern Territory, uh, there are regular occurrences where you can see uh, crocodiles. For example, with my job, I was in uh, Mackay in Queensland and there was a crocodile in the marina when I was there, where all the boats are. Uh, so yes, it's very, uh, very common for crocodiles to be up in northern, northern, northern Australia. Yes, I love my job. My job is my life. Uh, f you either like flying or you don't like flying as a job. Uh, for me, it's fantastic. Every day is a different day. You work with some amazing people, which makes the job very worthwhile. Um, we deal with difficult passengers sometimes, um, but we understand that every passenger has a different need. Some people are traveling for pleasure and for a holiday and vacation. And unfortunately, some people might be traveling for uh, a sadder reasons, uh, for family, family situations. But as a flight attendant myself, I enjoy being there to uh, embrace the journey of our guests and ensure that you have a memorable moment for them when they leave the aircraft. 
Yes. As far as, as far as I'm aware, in Australia, they cannot force you to go to the army. Uh, when my father was younger, when my father was a teenager, uh, he had to go to the army, he had no choice. But now, in these days, I do believe uh, you choose to go. We, we cannot be forced. Christmas Day, the 25th of December is Christmas in Australia. So we have the 25th of December off and the 26th of December, we call it Boxing Day. Um, we have approximately 10 public holidays in the year. Easter, Christmas and a few others. Australia Day is a very big one, 26th of January, summertime. And we all celebrate with barbecues, beers and spending time with friends. Generally, uh, a lot of Australians get drunk on this day. <laughs> Uh, we have different religions in Australia. It's a very multicultural uh, country. So we have a lot of people from around the world living in Australia. Uh, the main religions in Australia, we have a Christian, uh, similar to our Orthodox, similar to Ukrainian Orthodox, and, and Catholics. That would be two of the, uh, the main religions in Australia. And from uh, people coming to Australia around the world, uh, we have so many different religions. We have Muslims, uh, Hindus, um, you name it, we have it. The water is not so much going to end in Australia. Uh, we do have plenty of water, but we do go through times where we have drought. So when I say drought, it means minimal water. So if we are running low on water, they do have to put restrictions on things. For example, um, watering the garden. You might not be allowed to water the garden uh, if, if the water is getting low in the town. Uh, but to run out of water, I don't think that will happen. <laughs> I think uh, with p politics, there's always problems. Uh, our government likes to, I feel, spend money that they might not need to spend money on. And um, politicians can never make everybody happy. They try and uh, do the right thing for the, for the country, I, I believe. But unfortunately, sometimes, you know, what might be right for the politician might not be right for the people. Uh, so there is a, a little bit of conflict, uh, but not like I have noticed here in Ukraine uh, with big protests. Generally in Australia, uh, the people will not protest uh, against the politicians. In Australia, it's a, like I said, it's very multicultural. Uh, so we have a lot of influence from Asia. Uh, at home we eat uh, Chinese food, Thai food, Indian food or more traditionally in summertime we will cook meat on the barbecues and we will eat that with, uh, with a salad or, or vegetables. But with a big Asian influence uh, there is a strong Chinese uh, food that you know, a lot of Australians eat, uh, stir fries and things with sauce and rice. Alcohol is very expensive uh, but a lot of people still drink. So for example for a cheap vodka, maybe Smirnoff, uh, for a 750 mils, nearly one litre bottle, you could pay approximately $35 for one bottle. Um, younger generations tend to uh, get excited at 18, which is the drinking age, and, and go drink a lot and party and sometimes get into trouble. Uh, but alcohol does play a big part in Australia. A lot of people enjoy it, and some people do get a little bit carried away. Uh, so when, when, when people are born, we have two different healthcare systems, I guess, in Australia. We call one private and one public. So if you're having a baby, you can go and have your baby in the hospital for free and it's covered by the government. And it's good, it's clean, it's fine. But some people pay a monthly expense, and which gives them maybe a little bit better hospital, a bit nicer, cleaner, a private room. And we call that private hospitals. Um, so if you're having a baby, it's very well looked after. Work, the businesses. So for example, we have something called maternity leave. So when a mother has the baby, uh, 
the place of her work, where she works, they will pay her wage for a period of time. I'm not exactly sure how long that is, but they can take one year off work and I think it's maybe six months half pay. And then after that, the government does help with things such as um, schooling and childcare. If the mother needs to go back to work and the father's working, the government will help with a little bit of money to have care for the child. We have different options. So some television uh, channels are free. Uh, if you want something extra, you can purchase. You can pay a monthly fee for something we call Foxtel. Uh, that gives you more movies, uh, more TV shows, entertainment, sporting channels, but general TV is free. Yes, we have some movie stations, some news. Uh, we don't have to pay for this. In Australia, we don't really tip. Uh, if something is amazing, we will tip. But because the workers in Australia, for example, in hospitality, get paid good money compared to the rest of the world, such as America, or uh, other countries that have a lower wage, uh, there's no requirement for us to tip. If somebody does tip you in Australia, that means that you've done a real good job and you've gone above and beyond expectations to make this person happy. The service standards are quite high in Australia. Customer service is very big and I do believe if you come to visit Australia, uh, you'll have a very good experience. People will look after you in uh, cafes, restaurants and things like this. So you can retire at approximately 65 years of age in Australia. So through your working life, the company that you work for has to contribute some money for your pension when you retire. So once you hit retirement, you should have enough funds in, in we call it superannuation. This is the name for it. So uh, if you, your employer will put extra money in, say for example, uh, standard is 9% of your salary, they will put towards your retirement fund. It's not enough to retire on and it's highly recommended that you contribute some money also um, and there are certain government incentives. Uh, if you contribute money, uh, they, there was a time that they would match uh, the money that you put into your pension fund, the government would match this. Uh, there's also a few other incentives also if you uh, if you like tax deductions if you put extra money into your pension fund uh, you can pay a little bit less tax on that money that you put in i could not put a figure on this for you unfortunately uh, but university is quite expensive uh, you if you want to go to university you can uh, borrow money from the government uh, for your studies and once you have completed your studies, you do have to pay this money back over time. This money will get taken out of your wage once you're working in your profession that you choose. Very many. Uh, again, multicultural uh, country that we live in. In Australia, English is obviously the, uh, the main language. Uh, a lot of uh, Chinese, Cantonese uh, speakers, uh, Indian speakers. I guess different pockets of Sydney and Australia have different nationalities. We have Greece, uh, Greek, Greek people. We have, uh, you know, Ukrainians. There's a small Ukrainian community, uh, Russians. So, if you look at a map, all the countries, I could tell you that in Australia, someone will speak those languages. Electric cars. Uh, electric cars have just started coming in over the past few years. Um, electricity for cars, I'm not sure how much it, it costs to charge the cars, uh, but it is certainly something uh, that Australia is uh, introducing more and more of electric cars and also electric buses. Uh, we don't have to pay anything for healthcare. Uh, it, again, it depends. Uh, if you, I have a health fund, so as part of my health fund, if I need to go see a special doctor for the heart or eyes or dentist, uh, I pay a small amount uh, and get money back. But for this privilege, I have to pay approximately $150 a month for this. 
but it's not compulsory to have private health cover because the government can cover some things. In the future, very busy. It's certainly, uh, we have lots of people moving to Australia. So uh, especially Sydney, it's getting very, very busy. Um, there's a lot of infrastructure, new flats going in. But unfortunately with all the new buildings, the roads do not cope with a lot more traffic. So I can see Australia, it's, uh, speaking for Sydney, I can see Sydney being uh, very overbuilt and being very bad on the roads, lots of traffic and lots of expense to use the roads because we do have to pay for most highways, autobahns, uh, a cost to drive on these roads. So the cost of living in Australia in the next 20 years is certainly going to be high. <laughs> the image of Ukraine in Australia, um, unfortunately we don't see the very many good things. Uh, in Australia, if you ask somebody, or for example, I was telling people I was going to Ukraine, the first thing someone would say is why? <laughs> and they would be shocked. Because when you mention Ukraine in Australia, people think of the war in Ukraine, down in Donetsk. And uh, unfortunately, that's what most people think of Ukraine, as a place at war. Um, before our trip, I must admit, I was influenced by that a little bit until I spoke to family and understood that uh, it's very different to what we perceive it to be in Australia and since coming here it's beautiful. The war is not bothering us so I'll be sure to go home to Australia and tell people Ukraine is a place to come and visit. Uh -huh. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>